You're watching Strat News Global. I'm Amit Abrevi, and it's a pleasure to be joined by Lieutenant General Vinod Bhatia, especially on this day, 3rd of November. He was a part of an extremely important military operation that was executed extremely successfully by the tri services of the Indian military. General Bhatia, thank you so much for your time, sir. Uh, thank you, Amitabh. Jai Hind. General Bhatia, just going back to Operation Cactus and the Maldives and what an important mission it was. Now, in history, it's talked about in the same breath as the Israeli Operation Entebbe and even the American SEAL Operation, Operation Ger Geronimo in Abbottabad, which killed Osama bin Laden. So it's, it is being seen as an extremely well-executed military operation, what, 3,000, 4,000 kilometers away from your base? Uh, yes, uh, it is, uh, I think, uh, one of the uh, better operations carried out. Uh, without being modest, let me also say uh, that the operation was carried from a cold start. That way, we did not know uh, the operation is a pending operation, unlike the other two operations you mentioned. And uh, within 16 hours of the first indication of an impending operation, we had launched and executed the operation successfully 3,000 kilometers from the base at Agra. Uh, the task was uh, categorical. Uh, there was a coup which had been uh, uh, which was staged in uh, uh, Maldives, Malay, and the president had uh, you know had uh, gone to a safe house. We were to rescue the president, bring him to India, and restore the legitimate government of Maldives. And this uh, we start, we got the information at ten o'clock, and by two o'clock uh, next day morning, that's night two o'clock, uh, we had rescued the president of Maldives. So that is and without any casualties, you know, we had no casualties that that time. So this is something which uh, very few uh, militaries can actually boast of. And uh, let me say the Indian Armed Forces uh, carried out a joint operation. Uh, it was due to give a surgical manner, its precision. Uh, it went on like a you know a synchronized operation, like a Swiss block. And uh, it was one of the best operations been carried out and studied and did by uh, military strategists. Just tell us a little bit more about uh, the planning and how you came to know. I, I think if I'm not mistaken, since information had not been given completely, the thought was that it was probably something to do with Operation Pavan in uh, Sri Lanka. And then you got calls from the uh, 2B uh, chief, then uh, General VP Malik. He was, I think, the director, uh, deputy director, DGMO, and the vice chief as well, uh, yeah, General, who became General Rodriguez later. Tell us a little bit more about uh, the initial phases. Uh, it was on the 3rd of November morning, and uh, we were preparing for the administrative inspection of the brigade quarters. And I was the brigade major of the brigade. Uh, at around 9 o'clock, I got a call from the military operations director, that is Brigadier Malik. And uh, he told me that we prepared to move to island territory. And uh, you, uh, a commander with one staff officer, to report to Delhi uh, uh, earliest, uh, but uh, if you come by the late afternoon evening, that would be fine. Uh, so I, I, I did not, you know, the commander was uh, not in the headquarters, he was visiting one of the units. And that was the time when we didn't have mobiles and things like that. And uh, we were in a peace station. Uh, so I, I just told the, you know, the brigade quarter camp to get the vehicles ready so that we could drive off. And uh, that was what it was. And the first thought was because of our of, of Sri Lanka, and we had been often mobilized for Sri Lanka earlier also. And we were the reserve for Sri Lanka. We, I could not think beyond Sri Lanka in any case uh, as island territory. Uh, but around 10 o'clock, I got another call, and this time I was told that the vice chief was online. The vice chief was speak to the game agents, actually. Uh, so I thought, okay, staff officer. And, uh, uh, but when he repeated that, the vice chief actually stood up uh, for my chair and he gave me the instructions. And that's the time we came to know that we had to launch uh, an operation to Maldives. And it was around 10 o'clock, and he said, You implain a battalion group to implain by 12 30, just about a half hour. Uh, which was well nigh impossible. Uh, you know, we, we had to muster the people, we had to brief them, we had to move them, we had to collect ammunition, weapons. Those are days when you don't carry, you know, the, the men don't carry weapons in uh, peace station and we in Nabra. And uh, he was very annoyed when I told him that it is not possible for the para brigade to uh, emplane and launch by 12.30. We'll do it earliest, but 12.30 was well nigh impossible rather than, you know, giving something wrong. Uh, and we, we, we got actually moving and uh, we, we did move and uh, we, we just started moving and it was a training which mattered, it was a motivation, the leadership, uh, you name it and we did it. And we were at the airport by about 3.30, not before that. And that's the time when from the military operations directorate, uh, Brigadier Malik with one staff officer came with the briefing 
and they gave out the plan, uh, which was negated by Brigadier Basara. He said, "I will, I will give the plan. This is my plan." Uh, we were totally blind. We had, uh, you know, they had brought about three charts, uh, uh, and uh, we, you know, there's, there's not the days of internet, and uh, I, I was not so far thinking. I, but we did launch. We did move. And uh, I think the men at the leadership did a fantastic job. Led by Peter Bilsara, and Joshi was six para. Uh, the spirit was six para company, uh, two companies, and three para one company and two aircrafts. And uh, that was the spirit. And we launched, but we took over around five o'clock in the uh, evening. Tell us a little bit more of what was going on on those aircraft. Like you're saying, not the day of the internet. Uh, it was a very, uh, these three sketches that we that you have provided. Like if you can explain uh, what your task was. Of course, so Hulule is where the uh, the airport is. It's now connected by a Chinese bridge to the Malay island. Uh, just explain those those sketches, uh, General Bhatia, that uh, the planning that was going forward and how Ambassador Banerjee's inputs would have helped so much in getting all of you familiarized. I believe there's a there's a photograph of uh, President Mamun Gayum, was, which is also handed out to everybody because he was captive. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, the uh, General Malik, uh, uh, that's the Brigadier Malik, that uh, was the chief, uh, with uh, Ambassador Banerjee and one staff officer came from Delhi and uh, they were carrying certain maps and the map was actually of Ghan Airfield, uh, which was uh, which is about 200 kilometers north of Halule. Uh, we, we were not aware that Halule and Malay are two separate islands. Uh, it was only uh, uh, Ambassador Banerjee, he was carrying a profitable book and he was here preparing for the visit of President Bayoum, which was to take place on 3rd, 4th. Uh, he was to come to Delhi, which got delayed, fortunately. And uh, otherwise, he would uh, have been in Delhi when the coup would happen. And uh, Ambassador Banerjee was there in preparation for the visit. So he was the one who told us, and this is, uh, you know, there were just three sketches we had uh, of Malay. These are tourist sketches, uh, which Lemo had brought a few copies, photocopies. And uh, we were told to plan on that. The plan was to airborne, uh, it was an airborne operation to drop and uh, that, uh, you know, we, we are a large country. We don't, we don't understand that Malay itself is just about uh, three square kilometers at that point of time with a population of 55,000. And Hululi are different island altogether. And the Hululi air was 46 meters wide at the two ends. And the terminal was 250 meters wide. And we we did not have the parachutes. Uh, you know, uh, we only had about 60 parachutes, C5 parachutes, I-76, which is the range. And uh, uh, I-70s parachutes don't have, you know, what we call panigi car. You don't jump, water jump, you can't carry out the I-70s parachutes. And we would have gone to the water. They wanted us to drop out there. We have Balsara, his leadership, I must, you know, uh, thank him uh, for saving us, saving the brigade and saving the nation. And he said, no, we, we, we will take a call in the air. We are not uh, planning a drop. Let's see, let's get there. And we will drop or we will land. We'll, I will decide in the air. So the complete planning was actually done in the aircraft. Uh, the, uh, uh, the troops were briefed in the first aircraft was uh, two companies of six pilot, the Joshi was the CEO, uh, RJ Selin was the company commander, Umi was another company commander. And the reserve aircraft had K.K. Singh as the, uh, as the second, uh, as the reserve brigade commander. He was carrying the reserve brigade quarters and a company of three para. So these two I-76, uh, we took off uh, around five o'clock. Uh, we all the planning was done uh, during the flight, which was about three hours. Uh, so we landed there about 21:49 or 21:50, uh, about four or 50 minutes. The complete planning was done there. Briefings were done in the air, and we landed in back sort of good time to uh, Who took the risk of landing uh, on a blind, uh, uh, you know, uh, airfield at Halule? Uh, the code word was there with the uh, and me. Uh, the code word Habia. And also the uh, the lights going on and off for three times. But then the point was, anyone could have you know put a pistol on the uh, on the head of the ATC chap, and we could have given the code word, and we would have landed. Uh, uh, you know, someone just putting a bicycle or a vehicle on the runway, uh, the complete operation would have failed. Uh, the, uh, com uh, the the complete spearhead would have been you know written off. Uh, that sort of very very it would have very embarrassing. But then uh, of course you know the. Fortune favors the brave, uh, who dares win, that's a regimental motto. And we did land out there. And once we landed, we took everyone's surprise. The speed and execution, the speed of decision, speed of execution, the surprise factor was that. But later on, we spoke to the crew leaders. He said, sir, how could we expect someone to land at 10 o'clock? Who, who could have done it, actually? And uh, let me tell you, the, the, we went on invitation of the president. The, pre the president had asked the Americans that day. He had asked the, uh, the, the Soviet Union. He had even asked Pakistan. Pakistan. Yes, 
and India. And we were the ones, uh, the Prime Minister said, okay, go means go. And uh, we just took off and we went out there. It's a training, it's a self-belief, it's a motivation, the leadership, uh, which got us going. And we never looked back, actually. And uh, of course, uh, let me also say that we are lucky. And as you put it, you need you know, lucky leaders and lucky generals. Uh, we were lucky that day, there's no doubt about it. Uh, luck was not our side, but then luck favors fortune favors the brave, like I said. Janbhadi, you, you mentioned the code word Hadia, which in the way he means gift, which you got from the ATC and the decisions that were made then on the spot to land instead of uh, para paradropping there and how that turned out. Explain to us what happened after that, because still you uh, the, the, the troops had to get from the airport, from the landing strip to uh, Male, which meant uh, commandering boats, I presume. Uh, yes, absolutely. The first aircraft landed at 2150. The follow-up aircraft was 10 minutes behind. Uh, when we deplaned, now I-17 has got a back class, so we came out of the, front, of the you know the, uh, the, uh, the front doors, and we had to secure the airfield first. So uh, the, you know when the troops are cross the the, aisle, the second aisle landing, the troops are crossing the runway, and the air force too. Uh, you know, the safety is not done. But then paratroopers know how to take this and uh, they know about something about the Air Force. So we ran across the runway, we secured the airfield of both ends. And then uh, at the ATC, there was a second lieutenant of the NSS. And he got us through to the president. And the president said, look, I have been surrounded. Uh, I am safe right now, but uh, I know very, very soon they are going to get me. And uh, uh, you have to come, you have to hurry up. And so Brigadier Bulsara was a great man. He didn't ask anyone for any input. He said, okay, my plan is simple. Uh, three para company had landed. They'll go for the diversion right where the firing was going on the NSS quarters, which is across the, uh, across the channel, yeah. right up to Male. And he said, the diversion by three para, uh, six para, CO with the two companies to go on the longer axis from the southeast, uh, secure a beachhead. And uh, Dylan's company, which is Charlie company, Major uh, Ajay Dylan, to go looking for the president. No, we did not know where the president was. But it was very difficult on a telephone to explain where the president was. And we commanded boats. You know, the, 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 the Six Para is my battalion also, by the way. I belong to Six Para. And uh, we, we got troops who, don't, who, who were not very used to swimming. Uh, we got Sikhs, Bujas, Dogras, and Rajputs. So the, they, they were not very used to swimming in the seas. Uh, but then our troops are great. They bow, I, 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 they, they, us, they just surprised us. And they took the boats, they commanded the boats, and they took the boats, and the engineers were there also. Uh, they went, secured the beach. And uh, Ajay Dillon, uh, again, luck by default, he came across a man who took him to, uh, uh, you know, a, 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 a deputy defense minister who was a major, and who took him to the president. And there he said, uh, 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 they said, uh, they print the compliments of uh, the government of India and uh, uh, with the president. And we were to rescue the president. And the president then said that, look, uh, uh, now that you have come, uh, I would like to stay on at Mali. Uh, but our order was to bring him safety to India. So there, there was a little bit of a disconnect out here now, uh, which left us in a dilemma as what to do. So uh, this is the, the picture of that time when you... Uh, heard from the president that he was not going to come back with you, which is your original brief, your instruction. And this picture, if you can describe what was happening in the early hours of the morning. Yes, the early hours of the morning. And, you know, when, when, uh, when our uh, boats were launching uh, towards us, and there was firing going on at uh, Mali, and there was a ship, which uh, MV Progress Light ship, mm -hmm. which passed through. And uh, we were told that he's carrying hostages. It, it was uh, MV Progress in Indian uh, uh, merchant vessel and uh, we fired at that uh, we opened up and we fired at that uh, fortunately we didn't hit our own people uh, basically with firing and this ship was carrying 38 hostages uh, which was taken by the crew leaders uh, and uh, even the captain of the ship later we met him and he said we, we, we thought that we, the crew leaders may not kill us but you, the firing would definitely kill us fortunately you know the ship was listed uh, and uh, you know, coming back to the president, now, now that is the time when uh, I remember the commander telling me, pass instructions now to give body protection to the president. Once we rescued him, we cannot lose him because there's still firing going on. It was, you know, uh, uh, there's too much of ambiguity on what was happening. No one knew what the official situation was. Uh, and it was the leadership which was taking the decisions. There's no set uh, plans. 
uh, you know, it was not the position plans which were there, it was just the leadership. They knew what to do and they were taking the decision. And the president said that I, I, I want to speak to the prime minister. I will not go from here. And then we had to move them to the NSS headquarters, which was a little way off. Uh, but we had to secure the NSS headquarters first because the, the two leaders were there. So we uh, sanitized, the, we secured it, uh, we sanitized it. They were firing out there. You can see gaping holes the NSS headquarters. And uh, then we took him to the operations room out there. At about 4 in the morning, he reached out there. Two ten, he was rescued. At 4 in the morning, he reached out there. And uh, he spoke to the Prime Minister at 4 in the morning, if I'm not mistaken, around that time. And then the President said, uh, the, uh, the Prime Minister, Mr. Rajiv Gandhi was the Prime Minister. He said, okay, uh, uh, you are, uh, do the bidding of the President of Maldives. So the, the President of Maldives he said, okay. Our task was changed to rescue, uh, to, from bringing him back to India, to restoring the legally elected government of Maldives. Wow. And you were talking about uh, the merchant vessel, which is already listing, and the hostages, 38, I think you mentioned, including the Minister of Tourism and for, uh, his his foreign wife, I think, Swedish wife. Uh, tell us a bit more of what happened uh, with the hostages, because then at some point in time, even it was all uh, three services, right? The Navy was also involved, the Air Force and the Army. Uh, yes, all three services. Uh, on the fourth morning, INST was, you know, the nearest, and they were diverted to Mali, and they were they were uh, 400 the cadets on board INST. It was not uh, it was a training ship, and when they landed there at Mali, they didn't have water and they didn't have food. They said, "We want water and food." I said, "We even we, we don't have water and food. We had just moved in the wrong, you know, with whatever uh, ammunition we could carry because we were also to jump. So we were, we were moving very light." Uh, so we said, no, we will we'll try and get some water. So our engineers were there, the desalination plants were there. So they started the desalination plants, we could get some water. In the meantime, uh, uh, an IL-38 of the Navy landed. And there comes, you know, that time, Lieutenant Commander D.D. Nike, and we had the staff force together. And the moment he landed, we told him there's a, a ship which is carrying the hostages, and we fired at it. And he said, oh, we seen the ship listing uh, some distance away. And they took off, and then they diverted Ines Godavari and Ines Betwa. Uh, that was the fourth morning, and by the fifth, they had reached out there, and this ship was listing, uh, and there was firing to which took place out there. The, uh, uh, all, uh, the all hostages were rescued out there, including the uh, minister, his wife, and his mother-in-law. Also, let me also say that his mother-in-law also, <laughs> uh, the second Swedish wife, of not mistaken. And uh, there's a story which is which I was told by Admiral Mata was a village later on. Uh, who was off when he informed the Prime Minister that we have rescued the Minister and his wife and his mother-in-law. The Prime Minister, Mr. Rajiv Gandhi, told him he said, the Minister would be very unhappy because he rescued mother-in-law. So uh, this is the story which came out later. But at that point of time, uh, uh, Ainas Godavri and Ainas Betwa took the hostages on board, especially on Ainas Godavri, uh, as also the pool leaders. And they were brought in on the 8th morning and handed over to the President of Maldives. And it's interesting that you're pointing out uh, the Indian Navy's role uh, the American Navy also appeared on the Maldives shores. And you had pointed out earlier that the Maldives president at first reached out to the US, the then Soviet Union, Pakistan, and India was only the fourth. So from Diego Garcia, there were some vessels that had come in. Uh, yes, uh, at around uh, one o'clock on the fourth uh, afternoon, uh, I got a call uh, because I was manning the you know the, the, uh, the control room. Uh, of, uh, I was uh, the staff officer, I was the brigade major. I got a call, and uh, this is from the uh, chief operating officer of uh, Flotilla, and uh, he said that no, I'm so and so, uh, and we have orders to land at uh, Mali. Uh, we are about three hours sailing time away. They had uh, a battleship and two uh, LP, LPA landing pad helicopters, and all they were uh, uh, there still from the Govachi on the third. And they wanted to land at Mali uh, with the three hours sailing time away. So I, I spoke to my commander. Uh, I didn't, you know, that, that, that's a decision, the international thing that you do. No, a, a young major doesn't take such a decision. So the commander, commander was very, very, very clear. He says, you know, just tell them in case we need them, tell them the operation is uh, done. In case we need them, we'll call for it. They can keep sailing three hours away. I don't want them here because the reason is Mali is so small, it could hardly accommodate our brigade. Actually, by the fifth morning, we started deinducting also. Uh, so this is a very responsible. We are a very responsible nation. Uh, we go and we do the task, and this is inter uh, this is intervention, operation, invitation. And on the fifth morning, we had started deinducting. So our intent was very categorical: complete the operation and deinduct. Something which we also did in Sri Lanka. So uh, this is uh, something which most nations do not do. But our intervention operation is a very responsible operation. So the, the U.S. Uh, flotilla was three hours away, and after that, uh, on the sixth, they sailed back. They didn't. Uh, they didn't come to Bali. 
there's an interesting uh, letter which also you've uh, provided to, uh, to us from President uh, Gayum to the Prime Minister. If you could tell us a little bit more about that. Yes, this letter, we were, uh, it was all hindsight now. That time we were not, uh, we were only looking at the operation part of it. Uh, on the 4th, we had to clear uh, Mali. The President wanted uh, us to start. Because Mali is uh, basically the tourism industry. And he said, please, mm. we start the, uh, the, you know, uh, activate the area. We start the lights because we have to survive on tourism. Uh, so we had to clear the Mali uh, on the fourth, uh, sanitize the complete area because we were not sure what was left. And uh, uh, we had uh, no, known that the coup leaders had been captured, but the remnants we did not know. Some of the remnants we had chased on boats and captured also. Uh, and this is being done by, you know, our six troops. Uh, uh, so the Major uh, Pritam Singh was our six para. Uh, uh, so, uh, but this was being sanitized by three para, by seven para had moved in. We had the artillery there, 24 tons of ammunition there. The complete brigade moved in by the fourth morning. Well, it, was, it was a massive o o operation. We were just mobilized and moved in. Uh, it was fantastic to okay, everyone was there. Uh, but uh, on the, uh, you know, uh, we sanitized the complete thing on the fifth afternoon, uh, late afternoon, uh, we had the first flight uh, landing open. So the president was uh, exceedingly happy with this operation. We had no casualties uh, on our side. Uh, we had no casualties on Maldives said after we landed. Uh, there were casualties back to that. Uh, but after we landed and uh, we, we ensured uh, the safety of the people out there. Uh, and that is where the, we earned the goodwill and the respect of the Maldives people. And uh, this, this, this I think is, uh, is exceedingly important. Uh, doing the, the will, uh, you know, uh, uh, the will of the people is very important. The goodwill is very important. So that is what uh, made the operation. When we landed out the, you know, the duty free shops were open, the banks were open, uh, everything was there, and we we took we had to put guard on the duty free shop, guard on the bank, and everything. Uh, when the body people came back, they found as it was as they had fled on the third morning. Well, I can personally vouch for that goodwill, which still continues to this day in the Maldives because of uh, what you and the boys did 32 years back. Just uh, there was a lot of recognition, international recognition post that. And uh, Jane's doing an article, Time Magazine's uh, cover page as well. And it's interesting to look back 32 years when uh, India is still talking about uh, something of, of similar nature in terms of Tri service operations or projecting our, our strategic power in the region? Yes, sir, we, we have the outreach, we have the military capabilities. Uh, we may not have joint structure, which is which has come with the CDS uh, on January this year. Uh, yeah. uh, but when it comes to it, uh, our, uh, uh, our jointness comes out of our training uh, academies of the NDA, the staff college. Uh, the, the 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 war colleges, the national defense college, so the, the and and understanding for each other. So we we do have an informal structure, and I think our jointness uh, uh, during Maldives was uh, something which carried the day. The the you know Rukram Bevur, uh, he came under a lot of criticism. Let me also say that uh, for landing the troops out there, uh, but then he he also knew that that was the only way to do it. Uh, he didn't bother about anything. And same, same with the army and the navy. All three moved together. Uh, I, I can't trace that photograph. There's a photograph of me with the other two, with my uh, the colleague the navy and the uh, uh, and therefore all three of us uh, walking up the Malay jetty. Uh, somehow I can't trace it. I'll send it to you. Uh, it is the classic joint operation uh, which we talk about. Absolutely fascinating uh, story and insight. General Bhatia, thank you so much for sharing that with us and our viewers. And I will, of course, come back to you and get more details uh, since it's so absolutely fascinating. Thank you for your time, sir. Uh, thank you, Amitabh. Thank you very much. And Jai Hind. You've been watching Strat News Global. And if you do like our, our kind of journalism, go on to our website to support it. You can follow us on our social media handles on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as well. I'm Amitabh Brady.